Thanks, James. Let's get a little bit more reaction in terms of uh, the vote overnight, but crucially as well, as we are just discussing with Chris, what potentially happens next. Professor of Law and Government uh, and the Dean at the Durham Law School, Tom Brooks, I'm pleased to say, joins us now live from Durham in England. Um, Professor Brooks, thanks very much for your time uh, this morning. The question for many is, what happens now? This overwhelming defeat of uh, Theresa May's deal, um, it's hard to see that coming back again without some sort of uh, hard-fought changes from Europe. So how, what are the options moving forward as, as you see it for Brexit? Well, that's right. Uh, without uh, the European Union agreeing to changes, it's difficult to see what was to be the next uh, course of action, which would be uh, the government having three days to come back with some amendments that uh, the House of Commons to then discuss it. Uh, the issue for the Prime Minister uh, would be that uh, the government would be losing control of that uh, of that process, and so it would be the backbenchers really uh, driving that process, and to see what kind of agreement they could uh, have a compromise around, and then hope that the European Union is not going to uh, reopen negotiations. So that seems to be off the cards. Um, Jeremy Corbyn's motion of no confidence is expected to. Uh, lose tomorrow, so then that kind of sets a, uh, turns off a, a chance of a general election unless the prime minister goes for a snap election. So I think the only uh, real option on the table is a second referendum. I think mm -hmm. that for, for, for two reasons. One is that I think it will give the prime minister a lifeline. She's struggled to get things through parliament. If the public were given a choice of, of her Brexit, or, or remain, and they chose her Brexit, then that would give her the push to get her deal through Parliament that she has been wanting so much. Of course, it could also lead uh, to remain. But if a second referendum was about her deal or staying, I think it would be different from the last referendum, which was a kind of a leave in general, remain as is in general. The mm. public now knows what leave looks like. They've had a chance to reflect on it. The, the, the tide of public opinion seems to be very much for remaining. Um, but as I say, it'd be a lifeline for the prime minister. It would be those who want to remain could support that, and those who wanted to Brexit, uh, and, but without no deal, they would be supportive of this as well. I think it's the only way to draw a line. Would, it, would the announcement and uh, would a second referendum risk causing some social anger, some outrage, where you've had a democratic process already put in place through the first referendum, the people, regardless of whether they've changed their mind or not, have sort of said what they wanted, and now you've essentially got the parliament unable to deliver on that, saying, look, let's, let's just try again. We didn't like what you came up with first time, or at least it's too hard, so let's just try again, and hopefully we get the answer, which makes things a little more but easier for us. Well, I thought from the beginning two years ago that the Prime Minister had so many red lines on what she yeah. wanted from her deal that there was going to be. So the government wants to restrict EU migration into the UK um, more than it can under the freedom of movement rules, but mm. yet at the same time wants to keep an open border in Northern Ireland. Now, the only way you can have the open border in Northern Ireland is if you are still part of the customs union or some type of very close to that customs arrangement. Um, and that then means you haven't really left uh, ended uh, freedom of movement for EU citizens. So looking at that immigration issue, which was at the time of the referendum, the number one issue that people were voting on, she couldn't, she can't have her cake and have it too. So I think mm. the point that there is a democratic issue here, there might be a lot of people upset. I think, you know, politicians of many parties say lots of promises they can't always deliver on. This is one of many examples of it. Um, uh, but I don't think that the uh, uh, problems of delivering Brexit is, as it were, the biggest problem of democracy right now. Mm. You had an issue about, quite frankly, uh, the out strong allegations of foreign interference uh, in the election. Uh, we know what course of action the Americans took when they said uh, they, they saw similar allegations there with this Mueller in, uh, type investigation. There's been a lot of people calling for something like that here, but the uh, Prime Minister has resisted that. In fact, has stopped 
investigations into some key uh, uh, figures associated with some of these allegations. So there was issues around democracy and other mm. things. Will people be upset? We've seen lots of people upset on all sides, not least the three million plus. Uh, European Union citizens who have uncertain status uh, yeah. uh, in this country right now. So I think that the, the fear of unrest from the far right or from other things can't be what cows uh, the mm -hmm. government, can't be what stops the government doing the right thing. Uh, a referendum uh, uh, looking at Sir Deal um, for it or for, for the thing where we are would be an opportunity to draw a line to move forward. Is this the Brexit people want? Your members of Parliament say they don't like it. What does the public think? Yeah. If there's this real strong push for things, let's see it. And if it's not there, um, then um, the public had a chance to consider both sides. It was uh, keen on leaving, but then when it saw it, the tails uh, backed away. Um, that <laughs> looks like where we probably are headed. Um, a referendum, a second referendum, would confirm that. Just finally, Professor Brooks, what about if, if there isn't the stomach for whatever reason for a second referendum, what about a potential general um, election that would, would essentially be a quasi second referendum? Your thoughts on, on the likelihood of the, um, the Conservatives calling that and what the future for Theresa May um, is likely to be? Great. So the key reason, I think, why the Conservative Party is not uh, calling for a general election, that Theresa May has not been supportive of it, um, uh, has been because they think that they will lose. Yeah. Um, they are currently behind the Labour Party uh, in the polls. Last time they had a 20-something point lead uh, over the Labour Party. They decided to call a snap election to effectively kill the opposition off. And then everything spectacularly backfired. I think the real thing they're worried about is, is calling it for fear of um, what might happen. Now, one way that general election could help the prime minister in a nutshell is she could put into the manifesto, uh, look, vote for me and you're voting for my Brexit. That would lead to a very interesting situation for her current members of parliament. We know at least a third or more of them are against uh, her deal, and yet they'd have to be knocking on doors supporting it. So that could be interesting. But that could be one way of driving things forward. Of course, the other other side is the Labour Party saying they would want to renegotiate and that they would want to stay in part of stay inside a, a customs a arrangement, a customs union with the EU. So that could be one mm -hmm. potential way of doing things. However, note that the uh, um, under the terms of the uh, the way elections are done now, uh, post the 2010 coalition in, in this country, it would be a six-week, almost certainly a six-week election process. We would really have to see an extension of Article uh, 50. We would not be leaving on the 20th of March. What does this all leave for Theresa May? Uh, I'll give you a, 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 a word. Toast. Uh, she's effectively, <laughs> I mean, I just can't see her lasting much longer. She's heading the only government in British history to be found in contempt of Parliament. She's lost three votes uh, in the last week. She's got a government that can't command a majority. Um, any minority government or any other form of thing would be out by now. It's mm. incredible she's, she's been able to, to last. I think that she will be uh, out um, within weeks, if not, uh, with a, if not days. Uh, she, her days are numbered. Yeah, it certainly looks um, a difficult uh, path for her ahead. Uh, Professor Brooks, appreciate very much you joining us. Thanks very much. A pleasure. Look, so what is all this?